I'm Jason, and this is Build Apps Without Code, and I've got a treat for you today. No, it is not an animal cookie, but I just stole a few of those from my kids, and they were yummy. We're going to take a look at how to add messaging to your bubble app, like a chat, DMing. I'm going to show you how to allow your users to slide into each other's DMs. And we're gonna design on Bubble's new responsive Flexbox engine. Let me show you a quick preview of what we're gonna build before we jump into it. So remember when we started building an Airbnb clone earlier on this channel? I already built some of the messaging functionality here. So let's take a look-see. I'm signed in here as Chad, looking for a place to stay. Considering both of these beautiful options, Salty Blue 2 and Cozy 2 Bedroom Cottage, I'm going to click into Salty Blue 2. Now I added a couple things here since the last Airbnb video. Hosted by Lauren. So I added a field to the property table for host, which is linked to the users table. And I added the send a message button here. So if I click into here, I can see my message history with Lauren. I said Salty Blue is the place for me. How much salt are we talking? She replied, obviously the environment at Salty Blue is all salt. The ceiling is salt, the floor is salt, the walls are salt, and to an extent, the air is salt. And when you breathe that in, you constantly taste the salt. So as Chad, I said, I must admit, salt is a way of life and it is the life for me. I'm sold. Uh, I then went on to request pepper to go with my salt. She said, no pepper. I said, that was a trick question. She said, are you going to book a date or are you just going to throw salt at me at, in my DMs? Um, we'll get back to her in a sec. I also have a message from Jocelyn. You can see that it's unread because there's a little blue dot here. Uh, so let's click in Jocelyn. She was the host of the other Gravenhurst property. I said, um, you said your property has an abundance of trees and wildlife. Exactly how many trees are we talking? And then I said, also, do you have bears? What kind of bears would you say is best? She replied, that's a ridiculous question. False. Black bear. Um, well, I could type in a reply here. And I'm going to say false black bear. Okay, so if I sign in as Jocelyn, you would see that she has an unread message. We'll do that in one sec. And I'm going to go back to Lauren here and say um, question, can I bring a black bear? Cool. If I head back here, we'll try running as Jocelyn. Jocelyn only has a message from Chad on red. And here, one minute ago, I said false black bear. And if I sign in as Lauren, here's my message from Chad. Okay, you've seen the preview. We are gonna build this exact same functionality but here, Inbox Chat, which is a new app I made just for you. Now, if you go to buildappswithoutcode.com slash bockchat, two Cs, I will send you access to this exact bubble project in view only mode, uh, so you will be able to see exactly how we did it. Okay, Bok Chat. The first thing we need is a way for the user to choose who they want to start a chat with. Uh, this might be a little bit different for all your apps. In the Airbnb example we just looked at, there was a send a message to the host button on the property page. Uh, for this video, I already have a list of users here in a simple repeating group. Uh, you can see that I am logged in as Lois, well, there, and I can sweetie. send a message to Peter, Meg, or Stewie. But if I choose one of these, it takes me to a new page. The page is blank. This is what we're going to work on today. Let's do it. Here's the page we're going to work on. This is already on the new response dimension, so you might have to upgrade uh, if you haven't already. The width I'm going to use here is 1280. Height 600 is good for now. And type of content, we, we still have to add our tables, so we're not going to set that yet. I'm going to drop a group on the screen here. We'll call this group chat. And this is going to be the left side where the list of conversations or chats are. 
I know this floating group I have up here is 80 pixels, 20 padding on the top bottom and the middle is 40. So I'm going to put 80 pixels margin on that group just so it sits right underneath. We're going to make a column, not fixed width, no min width. Let's drop another group in. This one's going to be group messages, which will be the right side where the individual messages are after you select a chat. Not fixed width, min width zero. Now these I want to be side by side. Right now they're sitting on top of each other. If I go to my main page, I want the layout to be row. So now these are actually side by side. This one needs the margin of 80 on top. Now the chat one is actually going to be fixed. I'm going to recheck fixed width. We're going to try 400 to start. And the height, I'm going to make it 100%. So it goes full width of the screen. Same thing over here, 100%. Okay, now on this right group here, group messages, I'm gonna put a border on the left, just so there's a border in between. So I'm gonna remove this style here, and I'm not gonna use border style, I'm gonna use shadow style, outset, horizontal, negative one which we'll put it on the left side and the rest of these can be zero this will be black but with an opacity of 10. let's see if that works cool so you can see my left group here 400 pixels and then my right group takes up the rest of the space now i want a caption on both sides so let's drop another group in call this one group chat header This is going to be a row, not fixed width, min width zero. Let's put a hundred height for now. And let's throw a text object in there. We'll call it chats. I have a style here, Poppins 14. Let's put a bit of padding on this header group. 20s. And we can take off the min height now since there's an object in there. And for this text element, not fixed width, min width zero, min height zero, and that just fits nicely. Cool. Now I want a border on the bottom here. Remove style. I would set uh, vertical offset one. black 10 good now I want this same thing but on the right side and I wanted to say messages for now so I copied this paste it here and this will change to messages all right looking good let's put in the tables next data all we have right now is users and if I go into users here are my users I have set up Stewie, Meg, Lois, Peter we want a couple more data types though so I'm gonna say new type uh, the first one we need is chat which will be like a list of conversations or chats and let's add some new fields uh, only one field we need here I think which will be users, which will reference the user table, and we're going to make it a list because you can add more than one user to the chat. Uh, this will allow you to add at least two, but more in the future if you wanted. And we need another type for messages, we'll call it message. Now here we need which chat does the message belong to, so these are individual messages. Which chat does it belong to? Who is the message from? This will be a single user. What is the actual message? Text. And has the message been read or not? That will be yes or no. 
That should be good. Give me one sec. I'm actually just going to populate these tables with data so we have something to work with as we build our app. Okay, I put one chat in between Lois and Meg. Now we're going to go back to our index page. And I have a workflow here already on this group, group user in the repeating group row, which goes to the box chat page where the chats are. So the data I'm going to send, I'm going to do a search for chats where the users list contains the current sales user. So whoever I clicked on, so if I clicked on Stewie, then we want to open a chat with Stewie in it. But also where it contains current user, which is the user signed in. So we want to find a chat that has both the user I clicked on and the user that is signed in. Um, so in this case, I want to find a chat with Stewie and Lois if I click on Stewie. And I want to get the first one found because there should only be one. Now we need a condition here. This is only going to happen when this chat is actually found. If this chat doesn't exist, then we need to create it. But if it finds a chat that already exists, then we're going to go straight there. So we're going to put in the same condition. So I can copy this, paste. We're going to search for chats where the user contains current sales user and the user contains the current user. And we're going to get the first one and we're only going to run this action if that is not empty. So if it finds a chat that already exists, then we're going to send them to the page. If it doesn't, we need to, we need to create the chat first. So new action, create a new thing. Create a chat. So let's take this condition or expression, copy it here. This we're only going to run if it is empty. First item is empty. So the opposite. So if it doesn't find a chat, it's going to create one. Okay, so in this chat, we're going to add a user, which is going to be the current user. Remember, this is a list of users, so we can add as many as we want. In this case, we're just going to add two. We're going to add another user, which is the user from the row that we clicked on. Now, if a new chat was created, we still want to go to the page. So we're going to do another go to page. We're going to box chat. This time we're sending the results of step two. So whatever chat was created in step two, that's the data we want to send. Now back on our box chat, just make sure that type of content is chat because that's the data we're sending. So we need that to match. Just to make sure this works, I'm just going to throw a text object on the screen here. Dynamic data, current page chat, list of users each item's username. So if I click on Meg, can I help you? I should create a chat with Lois and Meg if one doesn't exist. There it is. Lois and Meg. And if I click on Stewie, Lois and Stewie. All right. Let's add the repeating groups. Repeating group on the chat side. Call it repeating group chats. This is going to be a list of chats. And we're going to do a search for chats where the users contains current user. So we only want to show chats that the signed in user is a part of. We don't, we don't want to show chats that they're not a part of. Uh, we don't want to fix number of rows. We can set this at 100 for now. Um, fixed number of columns will be one. Container layout row because we want things side by side. And not fixed width. Zero min width. Zero min height. We can uncheck this. Okay, let's drop a group in there. Call it group chats. Group chat inner. This is going to be a row. Not fixed width, no min width. Uh, we'll drop this to 100 for now. 
want some padding on here, so we'll put 20s. And the type of content is going to be a chat from the current cell. So now we can drop in text into that group and we'll start off with the parent groups chats, users, each item's username. So now you can see all the chats that Lois is a part of. Uh, we have one for Meg and one for Stewie. And if we go back and click on Peter, now we have one for Peter. Peter Griffin. All right, let's make this look a little bit nicer. Now for, we're gonna put our Poppins 14 on here. And this does not have to be fixed with, no min width, no min height. And I don't actually wanna show Lois in the name here. I just wanna show who the other person is. So let's do this slightly a slightly different way. Parent group chats. Instead of each item, I'm gonna put filtered. Where the username is not equal to current user. Then we can get the first one. Because in this case, the way we're building it, there's only two people per chat. You could build it with more than two people. But uh, in this case, we want to just filter out the uh, current user's username and that'll just leave us with the other user. So we got Meg, Stewie, and Peter. Lois is taken out, that's good. What? And I also want to put in the user's profile picture. So let's drop an image. This is going to be dynamic. Parent group chats, users. We're going to do another filter because we don't want to show the current user's profile picture. Username not equal to current user's username. First item's profile picture. Process with image IX. And we're going to resize to fit dimensions by cropping, make the stretch. And now we can set the size as a fixed width, which we'll do as 50 with the aspect ratio of 1 to 1. So we'll just get a nice square here. Um, this one we want to be first. We want it to be on the left side. So I'm just going to click previous or make first. And I'll put it on the left side. Let's see. All right, a couple things. Um, Let's make it a circle. Let's center this and let's put some gap spacing. So our image roundness, we'll just put it to a high number. 50 should work. That'll make it completely round. This should have vertical alignment and this group should have gap spacing between elements, column spacing of 20. Looking better, take out the border. And we can also collapse the height. So on that group chat inner min height set to zero. So that just fits around the elements in there. And on the repeating group, remove style, separato, none. What's next? I don't know. Let's put the messages grid on. Repeating group in messages. Type of content, message, data source. Do a search for message where the chat equals the chat we selected here. And I'll show you why we're gonna set it to current page chat. Back over here on our workflow, when you chose a user, we're sending data. Uh, we're sending the chat that has that user in it we're gonna open it on the other screen by default. Okay, let's finish this repeating group. Minimum height, 100, that's good for now. This is gonna be row, not fixed width. And let's do a test, I'm just gonna copy this, put it over here. Actually, no. And drop a group in first. So 
set it to 100 for now. Put in some padding. Now I'm going to drop in text and we're going to grab the parent group. Oh, we got to set the parent group type of content first, which will be message for the current cell. So this is going to show each individual message for the chat that we opened. And this parent group's message, message. So if we come back here and we choose Meg, we get some messages because that's um, the data that I put in. And it opens up Meg automatically because I chose her on the previous screen. If I chose like Peter, for example, it will open up his message, but it's blank because I don't have any data there yet. However, I also want this to work if I choose someone from the left side here. So we need to add a workflow. So let's take this group, group chat enter, start a workflow. We're gonna do something similar, go to page. We're gonna open the same page and the data, the data to send this time is going to be the current cells chat. So here's our ID, but if we choose someone else, see the ID changes. Now we can open up everyone's messages. Oh, yes. And what was that beginning, middle, and end part again? All right, let's clean up this uh, messages repeating group here. I'm going to take this out for now, and we're going to add another group here. So it's going to be called group messages inner the others. Why are we calling it the others? We're going to make this like um, iMessage or like WhatsApp where you have chat bubbles and your stuff is on the right in a chat bubble and everyone else's stuff is on the left. So this one's going to be the others, not mine. Type of content, messages, parent group's message. It's going to be a column because uh, the stuff inside is going to be stacked on top of each other. No fixed width, but we will have a max width. We're going to try 60%. And you'll see why soon. Min height, um, let's just do 100 for now. We'll close that up later. Let's take this, copy it, paste it here, fix it up. Parent groups, message, this is going to be the username. So message from username. So whoever sent the message, that's going to be their username. Now, right below it, we're going to put the actual message. The username I want bold, though, I'm just going to put b in square brackets slash b so I can get bold on top. And now that we have some elements in this group, I can close it up by taking off the min height. And also on the cell row or the inner group, outer group. Okay. So here's our conversation, but we want um, Lois's stuff, since we're signing in as Lois, to show up on the right, and then Meg's stuff to show up on the left. So not loving this style, let me just change this to regular. Makes it look a little less bold. A little bit of cleanup. I also want this uh, top header here to span the entire width. And right now it's got a there it is. Right now it's got a max width of 1280, so we'll just take that off. That looks better. Okay, so I want this to show up in a bubble. So if I take a look at my elements here, um, group Enter the others. This is the one I was working on. Want some padding. So we'll say 10, 10, try 15 on left, 15 right. We want it to have a background color. So let's remove this style. Flat color. 
Let's do it like a light gray. And we want some roundness, so let's try 20. Looking a little better. Um, maybe make that a little bit darker. We want that group to fit the content because it's spreading out pretty wide there. Uh, so fit with the content. Looks good. Take off the separato on the repeating group. All right, now we still need to move Lois to the right side. Before we do that, I want to put a date uh, underneath to say like when that message was sent. Now we can do that with a plugin called World of Time. So if I go to plugins, add plugin, this one's called World of Time. This is going to let me show like based on the created date of the message, it'll let me show if it was created a few seconds ago, or a few minutes ago, or a few hours ago, or four days ago. So here it is, relative time. I'm gonna drop it right in here. Call this relative time others. The date is gonna be parent group's message, created date. And we're going to make it small. I'm going to take this, copy, paste, drop right underneath because it's a column group. This is going to be relative time others current value. And we're going to make it a little smaller. Let's try 11. Cool. Now you can see when these messages were put in. I think we're good. So now let's put a condition on this group here. This group's message from is not going to be the current user because the current user's stuff we want on the right side and this is going to be the stuff on the left side so from's username is not current users username so when that's true this element is visible otherwise it's going to hide this element is visible on page load unchecked Now it's only showing Meg's stuff. There's some space in between. That's fine because Lois's stuff is gonna show up on the right side. I'm gonna take this group, copy, paste, and let's show it. There we go. Change the name to group messages in her mind. Change the background. Now I'm going to take the iMessage color, that nice blue color they have. Uh, so here it is here. Okay, now they're both showing up as Meg. So I'll change the conditional formatting. This group's message from username is the current user so change that to is then we show it there we go so lois's stuff showing up in blue meg stuff showing up in gray now we want lois's stuff to show up on the right side so this outer group container layout is row because it's side by side container alignment right now we have everything pushing to the left we want it space between and that's going to push the group on the left to the left and the group on the right all the way to the right. Lois says listen up everyone it's time for spring cleaning. Meg says spring cleaning oh not again. Lois if we all pitch in we'll be done in no time. Meg mom I can't clean I got stuff to do. I'm sorry that, that is a really boring story. This relative time thing this one says others this one we'll call this one mine. Good, now these, we're done with these. I'm just gonna make them really small so we don't have to see them. One, one. One, one, they're still there. They hide. Now we don't have to see them. Um, next thing I wanna do is put the last message on the chat right underneath the name. So underneath Meg here, it should say the last message, which, which was, Mama can clean, I've got stuff to do. So copy and paste this. Now, 
This actually wants to go underneath, not to the right. So we need a new group. Here we can choose this and this, right click, group elements into column, and that's going to stack them. This column group, we'll call it group chat inner last message. We need to change the width so that it fits in this 400 pixel group that we have set up here. So we have 400, we have 20 pixels in each side. Let's do some math. 400 minus 20 minus 20. We have a 50 pixel picture, minus 50. We have gap spacing of 20. Let's try 290. Uh, so here we would set the max width. So min, min width zero, max width there. And then if it's nice and snug to the right there, uh, this is going to be different. This is going to be, let's erase this. We're going to do a search for the last message for this chat. So where the chat is equal to parent groups chat. And we're going to get the last item. That's going to give us the last message. And we want the message. There we go. These ones don't have messages yet. Um, this one does. We need to center that. Let's just bold the name a little bit. That's a little better. And this one, maybe we'll just make it a little bit smaller. And this whole group here, take off the min height. What about me? All right, I'm going to put in some data for Lois and Peter just so we have some more uh, conversations to work with here. So we have a chat now with Peter. Hey, yo, Lois. What? I'm packing for Kiss Stock and I can't find my favorite underwear. We need an input at the bottom so that we can actually reply and create messages. So let's grab another group and drop it here. Call it group messages input. This will be row. Stop fix width, min width zero. Let's do 100 height for now. All right, our group is kind of being hidden here. So I'm just going to change the outermost group, group messages, where we have 100%. Let's just change that to 80 for now. We'll push it back down after. So we want to input in here. So let's put on some padding first. 20s. Input, throw that in. Call it input message. And we're going to use the same style here. So we used Poppins. Fourteen. Not fixed width, no min width. We'll try 40 height. And actually, just take out these conditionals. Don't need those. And let's close up this group. Min height zero. And we also need a button. Let's drop a button in here. Since it's row, it's going to go right beside. Button will be called send. Let's make it black. With the 100, maybe? Yeah. Height 40 and gap spacing on that group. So there's a little bit of space between the input and the button. Getting there. Uh, we need to build a workflow on the send button. 
So this is going to create a new thing. It's going to create a message. The chat is going to be the current page chat. That's the one that's currently open. From is going to be the current user. That's the user signed in. Message will be the input, whatever they type there. Is red will default to no. We'll work on is red soon. And reset relevant inputs. All right. So logged in as Lewis. Meg just said, I can't clean, I got stuff to do. Sweetheart. We all know that you don't have any stuff to do. Now I don't want to hear any more excuses. End of discussion. There you go. There's Lois's last message a few seconds ago. Peter, I'm packing for kiss sock and I can't find my favorite underwear. Lois. You mean the pair with the rip? In the right buck cheek? Beautiful. Now let me show you this data for a second. App data. Messages. Right butt cheek is red as no. Sweetheart is red as no. Let's work on is red. I'm going to put a little shape here right beside the message, which will show if it's unread. Shape called shape unread. And we'll use the same color as we did over here. I want to be a little bit smaller. Try 15, and we want it to be a circle. So high roundness. Okay, and we want it to show beside this, not underneath it. Uh, so member, select first parent, this group. We made 290. Well, now we just added another 15 pixels plus another gap spacing of 20. So we need to add 35, minus 35. So quick math, ah, 255. And this we want to vertical align center. Looking good, except uh, this, do we want, I want it to show all the way to the right. So this outer group, container alignment, space between. Didn't quite work because now the name is showing up in the middle. This and this, we need to group. Row. Gap spacing, 20. Make sure this is centered. There we go. Now we need a condition. This should only show up in certain scenarios. We're going to search for messages where the chat is equal to the chat from or the parent group's chat is red equal to no because we only want to show it if they're not red and the user the from does not equal current user because we only want to show if there's not read messages from other users not from myself now that search is going to get a count how many messages are unread and if that count is greater than zero if any of them are unread then we want to show this little blue circle hide on page load Lewis doesn't have any unread messages, but we just sent a couple for Meg and Peter. 
Let's log in as Peter. App data, run as Peter. Holy crap, I am freaking out. All right. Let's change this to false. Peter only has one chat with Lois. And there is an unread one. So if I click it. That was my unread one, but this didn't go away. So we need to add a workflow here when we click on the message to set is read that field to yes. We already have a workflow here. So let's go here. Group chat inner. Now we want to make changes to a list of things. And it's a list of things because we want to mark all the messages that we haven't seen, mark all of them as read. So message to a search for messages where the chat is equal to current cells chat, where is read is no, where user from is not equal to login user. And for that list of messages, we want to change is read to yes. While we're in here, there's one more thing we can do which is scroll to the bottom. Uh, so if you have a bunch of messages, it's just going to stick to the top and you have to scroll all the way down. But we wanted to scroll automatically. So on repeating group messages, entry to scroll to, we're going to do a search for messages where the chat is equal to chat from row, current sales chat. And we're going to get the last one. So it's going to scroll to the last message, which should show up at the bottom. So now when I click on Lois, you can see that blue dot went away because now they're all marked as red. So if I uh, sent a message back to Lois here, no, the pair with the hole in the left butt cheek. Oh, that one was hilarious. That was even funnier than your first joke. And we go run as Lois. Now I have an unread message from Peter. And that's why we get the blue dot. And if we look at the data for a second, is red is no on the message from Peter. And if I click it, it goes away because now I've seen it. So that becomes yes. Let's put that same blue dot over here and then we are done. And copy and paste. Adjust the condition a bit. Do search for chats where user contains parent group user, user contains current user. So messages, oops, first one. So messages where the chat has the user that you clicked on and the current user is read as no, from is not the current user. Then we're going to show it. We have an unread message from Stewie. We have a lot of unread messages from Stewie. I'm a dirty, foul little boy. Uh, this unread is only happening when you click here, but it's not happening on load. So let's do that first, then we'll reply to Stewie. We're going to add a event for um, pages loaded. And make changes to list of things, messages, do a search for messages where the chat is, this time it's going to be current page chat is read is no, from is not equal to current user.
change is red to yes. And scroll to the bottom, it didn't scroll here either. Unread messages from Stewie, when we click it, blue dot goes away, and it scrolled right to the bottom. And the reply is going to be, what? What? We should also put a scroll to the bottom on the send button, but you know how to do that by now. And if we sign in one more time as Stewie, unread message from Lois, we're going to say hi. Hi. <laughs> Can you put an emoji in? Yes, you can. Okay, I'm going to stop here for today. Uh, if you go to buildappswithoutcode.com slash bockchat and sign up, I'll send you the link to this exact project in view-only mode so you can see exactly how it was done. Also, if I make any bonus videos related to messaging, um, I'll send you those as well if you sign up. So sometimes people leave comments and have questions, and I'll just make a quick bonus video and send that out. I appreciate you watching as always. If you learned something today, please subscribe. Let's me know that people are watching and gives me the motivation to continue to make these videos. Um, lots of more bubble videos in the pipeline. Uh, so if you like this one, again, subscribe and turn on notifications and you will not miss the next one. You're awesome. You can do this. A little bit of consistent practice every day and you will be bubbling in no time. Like a pro. No coding experience necessary. This is build apps without code. I am as non-technical as you are, if you are non-technical. Um, but if you are, so am I. Um, so, you're good. Much love. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace. Hey, thanks for listening.